in case you forgot, none of them are professional dancers. We have a chef, we have a maintenance guy, we have a lawyer. A nurse, a shoe salesman, anything but professional dancers. So tonight what we're gonna do is bring them and show them this performance. Hopefully they don't crap their pants. They're about to see what professional looks like. Adam, good morning. Good morning, how are you, Jeff? I'm doing great, greetings from Las Vegas. Thanks for joining me to talk about Finding Magic Mike on HBO Max. Yes. I'm very excited about this show. Well, you know, you play Tito in Magic Mike, and it's almost a decade later, and Magic Mike is still around, bigger than ever. Did you ever think it would have such staying power? Oh, man. I, I mean, we knew at some point during the filming of the first movie that, that something special was happening, that we were making a movie that, that was going to resonate. I think we all really felt confident about that. But um, I don't think anybody realized that Magic Mike would turn into the global brand that it's become. No, no one. You know, and the new series, Finding Magic Mike, streaming on HBO Max, this reality yes. show where everyday men find their magic. They have to go to dancing boot camp, don't they? What, what were they facing in the weeks ahead, these contestants? <laughs> a lot of hard work, a lot of hard work. Um, you know, dancing, it's, it's incredibly physical, which is obvious, but then there's this mental aspect to it where, especially if, if, you know, if you never have learned choreographed dancing before, you've got to connect your mind and your body and, and you have to relax uh, to be able to do that. And if you don't have any experience doing that prior, which, which very few of our guys did, um, it, it's a really difficult task. And it can be, you know, it, without the right support, it can break you down. And luckily these guys supported each other. There was a great brotherhood. Our choreographers, Allison Falk and Luke Broadlick were, you know, just couldn't ask for better coaches. They were the same coaches that got the cast of the two Magic Mike movies ready. Uh, so you're, you're going to see these guys go through it. You're going to see them really go through it, the ups and the downs. Yeah, but none of these guys are professional dancers. We have a chef, a maintenance guy, a lawyer, a nurse, a shoe salesman. I mean, these guys also have, you test their confidence too. They have to sell it to the crowd, don't they? Absolutely. You know, and, and each week we tried to, to focus on, on aspects of, you know, uh, of, to, to, to highlight while they were dancing, whether it was, you know, appearing confident and finding that confidence in themselves so that, so that it was coming from a real place. Um, communication, you know, when you're, when you're dancing for someone, especially if you're giving a performance, you, you want to make sure that you're, you're actually communicating with the audience and, and giving them what they want, not just what you want to show them. Um, and so there were, there were all of these lessons along the way that we incorporated with the dance uh, that I think are valuable to anybody watching. Well, these guys get personal in front of the cameras too, don't they? <laughs> yeah, very. <laughs> I mean, these guys really, you know, they, they, they had the courage to show up for this competition and put themselves out there to begin with. And then they just kept building on that courage. And, and in large part, I know that that was due to the support they felt from each other, but these guys really was they reveal some really personal things about themselves and, and it's wonderful because you, you, you literally get to watch them grow before your eyes during the course of the competition. They emerge as different people than when they showed up and it, it was amazing to be a part of. I heard there's a third Magic Mike movie coming out, but they're putting you out to pasture? Yes. Say it's not so. <laughs> <laughs> well, I wouldn't say we're out to pasture. We're all doing other wonderful things like shows like this, but I think it was, uh, I, I think they might've felt it was time to bring in a new generation and pass the baton so rightly so mike lane uh will will do that and um i don't know maybe maybe the maybe the older guys will, will pop in for a cameo to to cheer on the new guys at some point we'll see well you're still serious about staying in shape i mean look at those weights behind you i mean i'm scared just yeah. looking at them <laughs> <laughs> they make they make for nice furniture but um <laughs> you know the, the movies definitely they did they sent me on a you know i'd, I'd always enjoyed exercise, but uh, the movies definitely took that to a new place. So uh, yeah, that's, that's part of the reason for what you see behind me. <laughs> and, and finally today, you know, I'm, I'm here in Las Vegas, Magic Mike Live at the Sahara Hotel. I hear it's just more popular than ever. Yeah, the show's incredible. I mean, it, it, people don't even know what they're in for with the show. It's, it's, um, it, it, there's nothing else out there like it. It's, it's really artistic. The dance routines are mind blowing and, it just, I, it couldn't be more entertaining. So, I, you know, if people get a chance, they should absolutely see the live show. You'll get a good taste of it on our show, on Finding Magic Mike. You're going to get a good taste of what the live show is all about. And I think people will want to go to Vegas to go see it. Well, Adam, you're one of the judges on Finding Magic Mike. I'm sure you're going to be fair. And uh, it's going to unfold every week on HBO Max. 
Hey, thanks for joining me today, man. Come visit us in Las Vegas soon. We'd love to have you. My pleasure. It was just there, actually. Yeah, I'll be back soon for sure. Sounds good, Adam. Take care. Thank you. Happy holidays. Take care. Thanks. Bye-bye.